Mr. Fan is seeking out an inventor called Kin Fen who is waiting in his living room. Fan meets Kin in his dining room, as he's interested in investing in his inventions. Kin explains the philosophy behind his invention, which is basically to remove disputes and chaos. He brings his machine, called the Conflict Resolution Terminal, in front of Fan, which is basically a hollow tube in which two people can play rock, paper, scissors, and draw out their hand to avoid cheating. Whoever wins the game, wins the fight. Mr. Fan is completely sold on the idea, and asks Kin to name his price so that he can buy the patent. Kin sells CRT2008 to Mr. Fan for 200 million pounds. Kin uploads his online dating profile where he sets up an impossible pedestal for women to reach, making it impossible for any woman to be eligible to date him. His highly specific demands are ironic, judging by the fact that he is the definition of mediocre in his looks, personality, and life work. A beautiful short-haired woman in a black dress walks by Kin at a restaurant, and he checks her out as she goes to a table and sits with her friend. Apparently, he is waiting for his date when a man sits down at his table, wanting to join him. Kin doesn't recognize the man at first, but then he introduces himself as Jiang Yuo from the construction company. Kin finally remembers him, as the last time he saw Jiang Yuo, he was just a little boy, before he got some work done on his face. Kin is surprised to run into him after 10 years as a coincidence, until Jiang Yuo corrects him by saying that he arranged this date with him. Zhang Guo changed his name on the dating site and came seeking Kin after reading his ad, but Kin argues that he isn't gay. Zhang Guo still believes that Kin won't know what he is until he tries out a possibility. Maybe he just lacks the courage to face the music, because he's always been overly kind to Zhang Guo, and that's probably the reason why Zhang Guo has been crushing on him all these years. Kin puts a stop to Zhang Guo's ridiculous and hopeful speculation and lets him down gently. Kin is on another date with a woman, who seems to have the potential to be his modern traditional partner. However, the woman looks down upon him for not giving his father a proper resting place, and not picking out one for his mother when she passes. He puts forward the solution for buying grave plots for his parents, and even her, if they get along. She brings out the pamphlet from her bag and starts selling him grave plots from her company. He gives her a strange look, while also silently considering that this might actually be a great form of investment. His next date is with a girl called Lang. She's a flight attendant for Hainan Airlines, and seems distracted, while Kin tries to know more about her, because she's the prettiest date he's ever had. However, she only came to see him in an effort to be practical, and Kin senses she doesn't really want him, so this date is a bust too, as he doesn't want to waste his time. She goes after him and offers to get drinks with him at a bar. Kin keeps joking, still unable to understand why she would show any interest in him. She's an avid drinker, in comparison to Kin, who is just sipping on his alcohol. She starts talking about the concept of love at first sight, and Kin can't relate to her, as he believes that she is fixated on someone, which is the reason why she's acting this way. She's on this date with Kin because she's heartbroken and trying to move on. Kin sees right through her before she even confides in him. Now that she has opened up in front of him, she expects him to share a secret of his own too. But Kin remains closed off, which is ironic, since he has been seeking an emotional woman all this time. Once Kin makes sure that he'll never see Liang again, he allows himself to get drunk and shares his deepest darkest secret with her. He failed a woman once, by giving her hope and then taking it away out of his own helplessness. Recently, he found out that that woman took her own right after their parting. He got very drunk the day he found this out, and beat up his friend very badly, who had played a very negative part in that woman's act. Since that day, Kin remembers her whenever he drinks, so he had to quit drinking. They're even, now that they've both bared their souls to each other, are with the comfort that their secrets will be forgotten, as they'll never see each other again. Kin pays the bill and parts ways with Liang. His next dates go awry for a number of reasons. One woman wanted him to live with her family after they got married, which Kin refused to do. The other had severe amnesia, and playing a tennis match with the third one made him realize that there is no way he could have ever met her stamina. He is now visiting the sunny region of Heiku to take a break from his delirious blind dates. Kin's friend sets him up with a recently widowed woman. Kin empathizes with her and makes her laugh, which is refreshing, since the last five years of her marriage were not pleasant at all. What Kin finds concerning is that she wants an old sickly guy to take care of as a husband, even though it would affect the quality of their marital relations, which is a necessity for a woman of her age. However, sex doesn't seem to be an activity of interest for her, as on Kin's inquiry, she replies that having sex once a year with her husband would be ideal for her. Kin buries his head in his hands out of exhaustion, while she reminds him that if he agrees with this condition, they can meet again, and he instantly refuses. He now understands why her marriage was in shambles. Kin is smoking at the airport when he overhears a man talking to a girl called Smiley on the phone. The man apologizes to Smiley for not informing her beforehand about him and his wife being on the same plane as her. He can't change the tickets, because his wife booked them for his brother's wedding quite a while ago. Smiley, who is actually none other than Miss Liang, finds his request to hide from his wife irrational and insensitive, as she'll be in the airplane cabin, while he and his wife will be seated in first class, so there's no place for her to hide herself, as she is the flight attendant. 
She is disappointed in him for treating her this way. As Smiley greets Kin and the other passengers boarding the plane, Kin recognizes her and reads her first name, Smiley, on the name tag. Smiley stays indifferent and focuses on her job, as Kin takes his seat and her ex acts awkwardly while boarding the plane. Smiley's lover's wife is sitting beside Kin, and requests Smiley to find an empty seat for her so that she can sit with her husband. Smiley keeps a cordial and professional smile plastered on her face while she tells her lover's wife that all seats in first class are full, and they should have arrived earlier at the airport to make sure they were seated next to each other. This is when Kin volunteers to switch his seat with Smiley's ex, claiming that no one should come between a married couple. Kin lectures Smiley on the value of good customer service and stands up, prompting Smiley's lover to exchange seats with him, but that man avoids getting up. Smiley reminds Kin that the plane will take off shortly, so he quickly sends Smiley's lover to his wife and switches seats with him. Smiley quietly sits in the cabin as the plane takes off, when Kin calls her to his seat, only to annoy her and give her a warning to be safe during the flight. Smiley prepares the food trays for the passengers in her cabin while Kin keeps talking to her about her complicated love life. He offers to be her drinking buddy again, if they end up in the same city after landing. Kin is visiting a lake in the serene town located beside it, to consider it as an appropriate place to spend the rest of his money, and life there. An agent is showing him around a beautiful house property he can buy or rent, and he can even have his own private pond. He gets a call from Smiley apologizing for her behavior yesterday. She has remained in a lousy mood since the flight that brought them here, and wants to meet up with Kin now. However, he has another blind date, which is the reason why he flew here in the first place. Smiley volunteers to accompany him on his blind date as a consultant, with the promise of not getting in his way. Smiley arrives at the restaurant where Kin is sitting at another table with his date. Kin and his date are having a good chat, while Smiley eavesdrops on their conversation and silently mocks the girl. Things go smoothly between Kin and his date, and they're holding hand, s until Kin finds out that his date is pregnant with an illegitimate child, which is very amusing for Smiley. Kin doesn't find the setting of him raising someone else's child as his own to be doable, so he rejects her, while Smiley is surprised to see how straightforward he is. After his date leaves, Smiley comes over to sit with him and mocks him. Kin is losing faith now, as every good-looking woman he meets is hiding something, and there's no decent woman in sight. Smiley, on the other hand, is an exception because, to him, she isn't just good-looking, she's ravishingly beautiful. She wants him to accompany her on a date too, but he directly refuses. Nevertheless, Kin comes with her to meet her ex-lover. Smiley introduces Kin as her boyfriend, and pretends in front of her ex that she is in love with Kin, probably to make him jealous or get her revenge. Kin plays along with her facade while Smiley's ex lets her go, entrusting her to Kin's care. Kin blows Smiley's cover and tells everything truthfully to her ex before leaving the restaurant. Smiley breaks down in her ex's arms, because she waited for him with love and care, while all he did was betray and leave her. Kin is at badminton practice when he gets a text from Smiley, assuring him that she's finally quit drinking. Later that day, he is on another blind date with a stock trader who is looking for a husband during her free time. She has a very practical approach to everything, as she analyzes everything in her life as a decision similar to trading stocks, which means that she goes through the pros and cons in the long term before making a choice. She perceives him to be a safe bet for long-term keeping. He warns her of how unpredictable and clingy he will turn out to be, and that her assessment of him was faulty, before he moves on to his next date, who is already at the same restaurant, sitting at another table waiting for him. They shake hands as if concluding a business meeting and give each other some valuable insight into the dating market. Kin goes to the indoor sitting area of the restaurant where Smiley has been waiting for him. Kin mentions how his date wasn't very interested in him, which hurt his pride a bit, and asks what's up with her. She gives the most unexpected response, saying that she wants to be his girlfriend. She wants to have a relationship with him that will eventually lead to marriage. Kin jokes that she wants to do it because she might also be knocked up by another man, but Smiley is serious. She promises to fulfill all her duties as his girlfriend and wife wholeheartedly on just one condition, that he allows her to have someone else in her heart. She won't cheat on Kin or contact the man she loves in any way, but would just keep a place for him in her heart and miss him from time to time, with the guarantee that she wouldn't do anything about it. They draw up a strange deal that in their marriage, their hearts can drift away somewhere else from time to time, but their bodies will remain faithful to each other. Kin really doesn't have anyone to keep in his heart like Smiley does, but he agrees to her proposition. Smiley wants Kin to come with her to Hokkaido, where her relationship with her ex began, and she wants to end it there too. Kin appears calm and collected, but deep down, he is overjoyed to find such a gorgeous wife. Kin and Smiley get to their destination via train, where Kin meets up with his friend Wu Sang, whom he hasn't seen in 10 years. Wu Sang married a woman in Hokkaido and then settled there. He greets Smiley respectfully and drives them from the station to where they will be staying during their visit. 
During the drive, Kin notices some arrows on the road, and wonders why they are there. Wu Sang redirects Kin's question to Smiley, as she has visited this city before, so she must know the purpose of those arrows. Smiley doesn't listen, because she is distracted, deep in thought looking out of the window. She answers when Kin manages to get her attention back. Kin mentions her ex, so she reminds him that they're dating now, and should enjoy their visit instead of talking about him. But Kin still hasn't fully adjusted to this new dynamic of their relationship. He makes Wu Sang stop the car outside a temple, because he needs to go worship. However, the temple is closed to the public today, and nothing can be done, even though they have come all the way from China. Wu Sang is surprised to see Kin's insistence on praying, since he has always been an atheist. But Kin feels blessed to have such a beautiful woman in his life, and perceives Hikato to be his land of fortune, so he will pray to every Buddha he finds here, doesn't matter if it is Chinese or Japanese. Kin's dedication moves Wu Sang to get them inside the temple, where they get body searched because there is a funeral going on for a member of an influential family. Kin feels awkward and is ready to leave, but it is too late now. Kin keeps peeking at the stern-faced bodyguards as he and his friend try to act mournfully and respectfully toward the deceased. When they finally get back on the road, Smiley can't stop laughing at the situation Kin got himself into. Kin is now upset at Smiley and Wu Sang for letting him walk into a stranger's funeral, and Smiley finds his annoyance adorable. He reaches out his hand to the back seat and holds Smiley's hand for a while. Wu Sang makes a stop to ask for directions to their hotel while it is raining. Kin spots a unique dining bar and asks Wu Sang about it. They arrive at the hotel, and Wu Sang assumes that Kin will be sharing a room with Smiley, but Kin clarifies that he isn't the one she loves, so he should share a room with his friend to catch up on old times. Smiley is in her room, and looks out the window to see a cruise boat floating and gliding in the water. This brings back the memories of her dancing and laughing on these romantic boats with her ex. The group goes out to eat, and Wu Sang makes Kin try a new dish which is very stimulating for his taste buds. Kin tries to feed it to Smiley so that she can also feel how intense it is, but Smiley argues that she is already overstimulated, and is looking for some numbness now. This is why she is drinking. Meanwhile, Kin is drinking to the fact that she would have never been with him if her dreams hadn't been shattered. He claims that he wouldn't have found anyone so foolish as to marry him. She is a terrible actor, and her feelings are written all across her face, which clearly shows that she isn't over her ex yet. He is tolerating her because he is wise enough to know that once she moves on, her heart will be whole and ready to love again, and that's what he's waiting for. Smiley lightly threatens him that she might also come to her senses after moving on, and take no interest in him at all, to which Kin insinuates that he'll make sure that her life is a living hell. Smiley gets intimidated by the grave expression on his face, after which he softens up and clarifies that he was just joking, and the only reason he is fooling around with her is that he is enchanted by her beauty. He offends her on purpose to make her overthinking stop, so she storms out of the restaurant. Wu Sang stands up to go after her, but Kin stops him. Smiley is taking a relaxing bath back at the hotel while the sun goes down. She dresses herself up in ethnic clothing while looking out into the sea, the mild sunlight reflecting on her alluring face. Wu Sang and Kin make a stop at the dining bar he observed earlier. Wu Sang suggests that Kin should go to the hot springs with Smiley after this drink, but he doesn't want to abandon his friend. In reality, he is serious about marrying her, and doesn't want to mess this up, because he knows that she won't be able to give him her body before she gives him her heart. And once she finally gives him her heart, he will be enslaved to her for life, so he wants to enjoy a few days of freedom with his friend. They look at a picture of four sisters outside the bar and decide which one they'll drink with, once they go inside. When they enter the bar, it comes to their knowledge that the picture was taken 40 years ago, and the four attractive sisters are all old now. They can't help but laugh at the hilarious marketing strategy they fell for. Kin wants to leave, but Wu Sang doesn't want to be impolite, so they stay and drink whiskey. A while later, Smiley also arrives at the same dining bar, because she heard Kin asking about it earlier and knows that he will be there. She doesn't have high hopes, but when she goes inside, the scene completely takes her by surprise. There is a small but wholesome party going on inside, as everyone is singing, dancing, and drinking. Kin and Wu Sang are wearing funny Japanese masks, and he immediately brings her to everyone to join in on the fun and hands her a drink. Her sadness finally drifts away as she surrenders to a smile. The next morning, Kin is still drunk from the night before, and is rambling on about how he was disappointed by the four sisters being old. Smiley playfully criticizes him for being unfaithful, but Kin views this as payback for what she has been doing. Kin goes on to confess that if she would truly love him, then none of the women in the world would appeal to him, no matter how desirable they are. Smiley jokingly checks to see if he has a fever when he takes her hand and wraps it in his arm, holding it to his chest fondly, as he replies that she is his best medicine. This warms Smiley's wounded heart. They pass by a small church, where people come to confess their sins. Wu Sang and Smiley encourage Kin to go inside and make confessions, to be free and light, as the people inside won't even understand Chinese. Kin sits on his knees in front of the priest and makes sure that he really doesn't understand Chinese. Then he starts confessing his sins, while Wu Sang and Smiley wait outside for him. 
They have a conversation about how Kin is an idealist at heart, and Wu Sang sees Smiley coming into his life as fate. Because not many women are able to understand Kin, but it seems like she does. Wu Sang asks Smiley if she knows about his invention, and the money it brought him. Smiley admits that she doesn't know much about Kin, except that her gut told her that she can rely on him, and he seems like an old friend to her. If she can't marry the love of her life anyway, she should spend the rest of her life with someone who at least understands her. Wu Sang argues that this isn't fair to Kin, and very selfish of her, because it is Kin who is the most deserving of her love, and she is exploiting his feelings for her. Hours pass by, and Kin is still confessing to the most minuscule of things. The priest tries to get rid of him, but he is just getting started. The priest sneaks out of the church and requests Wu Sang to take him away, because his sins are too many for that small of a church. They get back on the road and Smiley hands him some water, after which he talks to her romantically. They go into the woods, where Smiley is crying, before Kin brings her with him because he's concerned that bears will come and get her. Everyone laughs at Kin for assuming that there'll be bears there, and he and Smiley get closer after this outing. Smiley rests her head on his shoulder while they watch the sunset by the beach, and she tells him that she's his, just for tonight. Kin declines this offer, because he's a fool in love with her. Smiley recalls when she asked her ex to marry him, and he made a false promise to her. When everyone is asleep, Smiley writes a letter to Kin explaining all the ways in which he is too good for her, and leaves it behind as she bids her farewell to him and jumps into the sea she kept staring at. By the time Kin gets there with the others, he finds out that she was rescued by some fishermen, and is in surgery. Kin is depressed, but he visits her in the hospital, after which he gives Wu Sang a sum of money for all his kindness before he leaves. Kin admits how lonely he feels, before returning to the hospital, as he plans to nurse Smiley back to health. It's almost New Year, and Kin is pushing Smiley around in a wheelchair on a luxury cruise. She takes Kin's phone and calls her ex on it, to inform him that she has moved on. And this is her final call for closure, as she has finally found someone to love and spend the rest of her life with. Then she throws his phone into the ocean, and responds to Kin's protest by saying that he doesn't need to call anyone else, as both their hearts are whole, and reserved only for each other. 